Hey everybody! In today's video, I'm going to do another brayered background. I've been really into these lately, and this image is so much fun. I had to try it with kind of a distressed brayered sky around this beautiful little lady, and I'm going to put her in Paris. I have two sets of these French sort of oversized stamp sets that I just love. And this one is perfect for a slimline format. So I stamped it on the pre cut and scored slimline cards that I buy. And then I stamped her again on a piece of masking paper. And I'm just positioning that on top of this stamp image. I also created masks for the food that's on her table, the little cups and the pastry, and I will be covering those up as well. I'm not going to cover up the table. It's just going to sort of blend into the background. That would have been too, too skinny to cut out, so I chose not to do that. So I will get those all covered up. Now the thing about brayering a background on top of masked images is you will get a little bit of a halo, but I will show you how to very easily get rid of that one of any number of ways. But the way that I did it, I find super easy and I always have these little tiny little things on my desk. So I had to take my glasses off to, <laughs> to see that last one. It was pretty small and get the release paper off of it. So I will cover that up and now she is ready to create the background. So I have a couple different colors of Gina K ink here. I was going to use a uh, sky color, but I'm actually not. I'm just going to use two different colors. So this is one of my favorite colors. This is sweet corn. So it's kind of a more muted yellow than her wild dandelion, and I really like it. So I'm inking up my brayer, making sure to go a full revolution and not back and forth. That's really important. And I'm putting literally no pressure on the brayer as I go across this little scene. That really helps you get not any streaky, like hard marks with your brayer. And then I decided to switch to my two inch brayer. This little one is more aptly sized for the slimline surface that I'm covering up. And the post-it notes on the left are just keeping me from going back to the back of the card. So I'll keep going. This gives you kind of a plaster look that I really wanted, a little bit of distress. It's so perfect for this French image. I just love it. So it's almost like she's sitting in front of a wall, a look that I'm going to complete with another stamp from this stamp set. So I will bray her over the table. I am going past the image all the way to the edge of that masked portion of the back of the card. And I do try to position the post-it notes when I'm doing something like this so that they are over the score line. Because if you're brayering or ink blending or any of that, running into that score line can create a darker stripe of ink, whether you're doing it on the emboss side or the deboss side. So I'll go into a couple of areas and make sure they all have ink. But like I said, I will be fixing the halos. So don't worry about that just yet. Then I will switch to the pink ink for sort of a sunset. Or as I always think when I see this combination, a tequila sunrise combination. And that will just give you that beautiful little gradient. But before I add that, I am going to add wild dandelion. That's going to add a warmer tone to that more muted yellow. And I'm still going to let this sweet corn ink shine through here. You'll see both colors in the finished card. And that contributes to that plaster sort of look that I'm going for. You can roll off a little bit of ink before you start brayering on if you don't want as intense a color. I 
I am getting as close to the image as I can with this ink, but it isn't possible to get all the way up to the edge of it, like I said. Now I will clean this off on a paper towel. You can use a baby wipe before switching to the pink ink. I did not do this step between the sweet corn and the wild dandelion because it doesn't really matter. They're in the same family, but I definitely don't want to contaminate the pink ink pad with any of the yellow. So now I will apply the pink ink. Starting at the top, again for that sunrise, sunset feeling, and just working my way down until the brayer runs out of ink. This is the easiest way to get a smooth brayer blend, is to start where you want to start and work your way down the card without re-inking, and that will give you that sort of ombre gradient with your brayer. Again, no pressure at all on the handle of the brayer. That's how you can get streaking and little marks that you might not want. Now I'm just using a very inexpensive cosmetic sponge with a super fine texture to it to fill in all the halos around the image. This is the easiest way to do this. I find sometimes if I'm just doing regular ink blending, I can't get the area that I'm blending small enough, but if I pinch these little sponges, I can get them just in the area where I want the ink. And I'm not just essentially ink blending the entire card all over again, which I wanted to avoid because I like the texture from the brayer. So now that that's all set, I am going to leave this masked. And these are the two stamp sets that I was talking about. The second stamp set has the words that I want to use. It's sort of like a collage sign of signs in Paris. and. So I'm going to stamp that over the image and behind her. I love that she's looking off into the distance. So it will be like she's looking at these signs, a vacation. So I will position that just over her. There are some horizontal elements of these little signs. And so you'll want to make sure that you get those straight. Then I will take all of this and put it into my Misty. And it's okay if you have a slimline. I know different people do different size slimline cards for some reason. So if you have one that sticks out a little bit, it's not going to affect the way that this stamps. So I'll get that all set up again. And I'm going to stamp this in the wild dandelion so it won't be super prominent. I didn't want anything like black because I wanted her black and white image to be the star of the show. And I wanted this to sort of melt into the wall that I've created with the ink. So this will be just a tone on tone stamping for this background. Now I have my little Chucky tool that I am pressing this down with just a little bit to make sure I get a good impression. And then I will re-ink it and stamp it one more time. I do want you to be able to see these words. So a couple of inkings and you can really see the detail of those pretty little signs. It's amazing how much this tool helps you get a good impression in your Misty. I love mine and I use it all the time. Okay, so I will remove that and then we will do the big reveal, which is my favorite part of any masked card. So the first step is just to remove the post-it notes and then you'll see that nice crisp card front. This is really a huge part of making an ink blended card that's already going to be scored and ready to fold. I will say, that being said, that wraparound cards are fun too, where part of the design goes onto the back. I just find with ink blending that scored line just picks up way too much ink. So if you had an unscored piece of paper, a wraparound design is super, super fun. 
So I'll just line up the edges. I like to do this in my score buddy to make sure that the edges are even when the card is closed. And then I do the final crease on the spine. So now I will remove these masks. I like to keep my mask with the stamp set. That's why I brought the stamp set back. I just put it on top of the image on the packaging of the stamp set and I never have to cut a mask again. So that's my little tip for you. Do not throw these away. So here's the fun part. I love this. Got to make sure I get the back of her chair there so I don't tear my mask. I am pretty famous for tearing my mask. But look how beautiful that is on that pretty sort of plaster sunset background with the little stamps. So gorgeous. It's like a little vacation in a card. So head over to my blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching.